pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We could remain standing and since our last meeting, Paul Hackett and also our men and women in the armed forces. Okay, thank you. Public comment on agenda items. Next on the agenda is the liability waiver form for the seniors senior stretching class that I had brought up at the last meeting. Uh, it was made by the office downstairs. I have no no changes, but if you take a moment, this is what we're going to use unless it's changed for those that want to participate. And we'll probably end up using it for other activities as they as they come to us. You looked at this list. Take a motion if you can make her with motion. motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? second? Second by Trustee Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Cool. Approved minutes that were written from our last meeting here, a regular meeting on the 4th of September 2018. Make a motion to be approved. Motion by Trustee Hour. Is there a second? Second. Same with Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The uh, hazard mitigation from the county was put into your boxes a week or two ago for review. Uh, tonight is uh, the resolution to accept it. There were a couple minor changes as far as uh, people to be notified. Those changes have been made. And uh, I think we should go with what's been presented to us. Again, you all have it in your boxes. So I'll read a resolution. Resolution to authorize the acceptance and the adoption of the multi-jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan Update for Orange County, New York. Whereas the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, with the assistance from Barton and Logitis of DPC, and get, has gathered information and prepared the Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan Update for the County of Orange, New York. And whereas the Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan Update for Orange County, New York has been prepared in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 in Title 44, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 201. And whereas Title 44, Chapter 1, Part 201-6, C5, requires each local government participating in the preparation of multi-jurisdictional mitigation plan or plan update to accept and adopt such a plan such plan and whereas the village of Holland Falls has reviewed the 2018 multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan update for Orange County has found the document to be acceptable and as a law as a local unit of government has afforded its citizens an opportunity to comment and provide input regarding the plan update and actions included in the plan 
And whereas the Village of Holland Falls will consider the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan update for Orange County during the implementation and updating of local planning mechanisms and will incorporate the hazard assessment data, hazard vulnerability, and mitigation actions in these, in these me mechanisms where applicable. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Holland Falls, as a participating jurisdiction, adopts the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan update for Orange County, New York, dated April 2018. Charlie, you have anything on this? Um, no, you've already corrected the minor errors, so I'd be happy to move it. Motion by Trustee Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Ramos. May I have roll call? Trustee Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next on the agenda is a um, an email that we received from Justin Ryder, the town attorney, i.e. also the uh, zoning uh, attorney, and uh, Elise, you're the zoning attorney? I'm the zoning attorney. chairman uh -huh. forwarded this email from Justin Ryder, the town attorney. Um, the town has increased the planning board fees, escrow fees to $1,200. And the chairman of the ZBA um, asked that I ask the village if the ZBAs, they would go along with the ZBA as well. Um, so the town has already increased these fees for both boards in terms of escrow and the ZBA is asking that the village uh, also increase escrow for village residents who apply before the ZBA. So if they're asking it to go from 750 to $1,200. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you look down the email, you'll notice that uh, Mr. Janarone, the chairman of the ZBA, <laughs> um, sent a justification with his request to the town, so I was also forwarded that to to the village for your consideration. So a motion would be required and a second and passing to increase the escrow at the zoning uh, level from 750 to 1200. I'll move on. No, I'll, I'll make the motion that we increase the uh, ZB escrow, ZBA escrow account per the recommendation of the zoning board chairman. Sir? Second. Second by Trustee Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Why don't you communicate with Justin? Okay. You know, that's that would be good to do, I think. Next on the agenda is curb your curb your dog signs to be put up in all the municipal lots. Discussion. I'd rather I don't want to speak as a trustee on this because I'll go up here. The reason I don't want to speak as a trustee is because uh, my house, my home is right next to this one municipal lot. I think right now, from where I live, on top of uh, Mountain Avenue, there is a municipal lot behind my home. We have to remember, the more signs we put out there, these signs have to be enforced, too. And for Row Park alone, Row Park has five signs for cleaning up after your dog. I'm at Row Park just about every day. Nobody cleans up after their dog. I just, speaking for myself, when you start putting more and more signs around, it's taken away from the green. And where I live, I have a beautiful brook behind my house. I won't even get into this. There was an apple tree that was 100 years old behind my house. It was recently just cut down. By accident, accidents happen, okay? 
I have a whole view of this lot now. Throughout this lot, next to my house, in the past there's been drug trafficking. There's been a lot of things that go on there, okay? The lot is right in my backyard now. I really do not wish to look at these signs now. And again, like I say, I'm just going to make a wild guess at this, okay? I know the police department and they're doing a great job, okay? But I would probably guess in the past six months, curb your dog, there hasn't been one ticket issued. It may have been a warning, but not a ticket issued. I just, I don't want to get too sign happy in the village. I don't think it's good for the village. And just speaking for myself as a resident, where I live at my home, I don't want to look out and see two signposts now. So I will abstain from this. Uh... That's it. Back to the trustee. Okay. One of the problems is that you have to be there in order to give someone a ticket. Someone can't complain that I saw a dog. I mean, you have to be there, witness the dog with the owner. But there's got to be a way of finding people. There just has to be. There's no reason for people not to be able to clean up after their animal. People are lazy with that. They're just lazy. They'll let the dog go and they could care less. And, and again, I'll use the park as an example. It's a beautiful park. And you'll be walking and there it is. They just, that's what they do. Um, you, I, I will give some uh, kudos to the police department, at least through Sergeant Torpy, because I've been on this case for a while, um, mostly down here. Um, I don't know if he is still doing it, but you're talking about enforcement. They may not observe the dog in the act, but um, they were going up to people who were walking dogs to ascertain that they were carrying bags. the bags, Good. which Good. is one Good. step in the right direction. Thank you, John. Oh, I, I did have another question. Merv mentioned that there were going to be two signs in the parking lot. Um, it, I, that's not correct, is it? It is. It's only one sign. Two. I don't care if there's one or two or three or four, but you know, I, I even differ where it should go, but I think it should go up in front of the parking lot, not in the back. But I can talk to the highway superintendent about that. Um, so I think having a sign there um, gives extra merit to the police officers. If they do see somebody up there with their dog, they can say the sign is right there. So it might help to that effect. Just everybody speaking. doesn't know what the local law is sometimes, and they can say, well, I don't know what the local law is. And then they can say, well, unfortunately, you might not know what the local law is, but we hope you could read the sign over there. That's just, you know, that's my take on why a sign would be beneficial. I understand what you say. I'm just speaking as a homeowner that um, I already have some soil sites. So, anyway. Uh, this will be for all uh, parking lots uh, that the village, under the village's name. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Trustee Ramis. Is there a second? For for all municipal all. lots to have uh, a sign that uh, asks yeah. to please curb your dog. It's all. Can we stipulate that it is just one sign per lot? Well, uh, depending, I would say depending on the size, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think what lots. Okay, so so you have the where the farmer's market is. You have behind town hall. There's people in there all the time. Let's, we'll use our judgment, yeah. I don't, I don't, that's um, fine. I, I'm willing to second this if we can do it on an experimental basis with a, a real commitment from the police department that they will issue tickets. And we'll see at, after six months if there's been any effect. But Charlie, I was just about to say that, back to the trustee part of me, 
I will be doing a monitoring on that because if no tickets are going to be issued on signs that we're going to spend for taxpayers' money, um, it's like having 30 mile an hour zones and people doing 55 through them. And let's also remember so, that if there's no mess in any given parking lot, then there, I, I assume you wouldn't see a ticket for that parking lot. Okay, so let's make sure we gather all the information when we're doing this research. Okay, so I have a. Do so I have you, a. You want me to change my motion to a six month? Uh, how would I put it? Yeah, let's give it till next spring and see what happens. A six month trial. Trial. <laughs> Great word. All right, so uh, I would ask that uh, to change my motion, please, to a six month to May trial 1. basis. October 1 to May 1. That's for the Curb Your Dog and All Municipal Lights. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'd just like the record reflect that uh, Trustee Lucy would um, She's got it. She got it. Okay. But I appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, we have a request for the police chief for authorization to sign the SLETPP. And what that is, that's uh, Advanced Law Enforcement Terrorism Prevention Program uh, Alert Training for Terrorism. Uh, for the calendar, uh, Gina, is this a, what is, and this says a calendar year 2017. The county's behind? Wow. Uh, for the mayor to sign, uh, Sergeant Jason Torpy and the police chief, Kenneth Scott, for the three signatures to go on this contract. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have the authorization for the mayor to sign a contract with Edmonds. And associates for computer system application software to upgrade financial utility billing pro real property and payroll programs uh, we talked about this at budget time it, we put money in the budget uh, for new software and uh, th so this will be the uh, if approved tonight company will come in and replace our software the town actually has the same software they've had it for about a year and they're happy with it um, so we have that to re refer to plus there's uh, there, it, they were checked out but the town has them and they're they're okay and um, so a motion would be required comment comment um, and Gina when we were um, down some personnel, when we have the same system like this, the town has helped us out in the past, right? With some personnel to come up, so it's only better if we have the same system as them, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Trustee Murphy, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Halloween. Um, I told you guys back in July the calendar is going to go quick now. So we're going to talk about the Halloween parade, uh, the trunk or treat. It will be held at Memorial Park, Municipal Lot, on the 31st of October from quarter to 6 to 7.30. Sponsored by the Town of Highlands Chamber. I guess that means with their insurance. Insurance been given in? Yes, it's attached. Okay, uh, insurance. Jenny, are, you, are your paperwork's all done? Yes. Motion? I make a motion. <clears throat> motion by. I make a motion. Trustee Howard, is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. It's a great event. <laughs> it's a great event. No. Okay. So, property maintenance hearings. Let it public hearing opened up at 720, 718, 19 there. Um, this is our continuation of straightening up property maintenances around the village. Uh, it, it's every two weeks, there's a list. 
and before it's asked these are repeaters I appreciate the new format Regina I appreciate the new format Village of Holland Falls. Is there any? Excuse me. So it opened. We opened up the public hearing. Anyone here representing Twenty Two Mountain Avenue, One Seventeen Center Street, Six Catherine, Twenty Lake, One Twenty Eight Mountain. And on Mountain Avenue section. And on Mountain Avenue, a vacant lot, section One Hundred Four, Block Three, Lot Thirty. Let the record show no one is here. Owner or anyone representing them? I'll close the public hearing. So, what is it exactly now with some of these repeaters that's happening tonight that hasn't happened to them before? The board did ask me to look. violations within any 12 month period. Right now what happens is there's, an, there's a violation, it's issued, uh, no one shows up at the public hearings, and I'm generalizing of course, and then the village undertakes to mow the lawn for example or clean up the yard. Then that gets levied onto the property. That's okay but it doesn't really, for these repeat offenders, it doesn't seem to stop what they're doing. They're not paying any attention. They just allow the village to be the property maintenance. So my only, you know, my only recommendation at this point is it doesn't appear that continuously finding them or doing the work or levying the, the cost is making much of a difference. It may be that requiring them, requiring the uh, village building department to actually issue an appearance ticket for the Justice Court may be um, a, a, a way. First of all, the Justice Court can say, you know, look, this is the third time in 12 months. I am now going to convict you, especially if you don't show up, and I'm going to sentence you in abstentia to 15 days in prison, and I'm going to issue a warrant for your arrest. So a couple of times that happening, it's probably going to make an impression. So I would just have to, if the board wants me to proceed with that kind of enforcement, I would need to draft, I would need to revise your local law and probably sit down and work with your building department to make sure that uh, they understand how these types of appearance tickets have to be served. Elise, so we can't escalate a surcharge or a fine um, without the appearance ticket? Well, no, you can already do that under your code. There is an escalation so that, for example, if it happens once, you know, there's a 300 to 500. Second time in 12 months is 400, 800. But much of this has to do with um, uh, issuing uh, appearance tickets for the Justice Court. So we can also make a bit of a change that so long as there's a, there's a hearing, which you go through every two weeks, that those uh, fines can be, you know, increased at, at, at a matter, as a matter of course. Thing to remember though, um, when you issue appearance tickets, for example, um, the violation, the violations have to be issued a day, okay? So you can't say, well, you were in violation from this period to that period. <clears throat> That's one violation. If you, <coughs> if your building inspector says, you violated, I violated you on this date, 
two days later I went by, you hadn't done anything, I violated you on that day, you had actually issue those violations, then each one counts towards this fine. So there's a, there's a procedure that has to be followed to the letter or there's an issue. And so if the board wishes, I can now undertake some modifications actually to the property maintenance law to incorporate some of these suggestions so that you can take a look at that. Well, I'd like to see that done for one because this is just becoming <coughs> annoying. Please, please, and then present it to us and I we'll read that. it and we'll put it on the agenda. Okay, good. Good. So, uh, Jenny, you have the, we closed the public hearing, correct? Okay. Whereas the village, uh, village of Holland Falls Board of Trustees resolution concerning violations of property maintenance, the locations are 22 Mountain Avenue, a vacant lot on Mountain Avenue, section 104, 3, uh, lot 30, 117 Center, 6 Catherine, 20 Lake Street, and 128 Mountain Avenue. Whereas a long-standing violations of village Village's Property Maintenance Law, Chapter 170 of the Village of Holland Falls Code has existed at each property listed above, designated as tax map number also noted above. And whereas the property owner or owners have been given due notice of said violations and have been directed to correct the violations. And whereas the property owner or owners were given due notice of a public hearing to be held by the Board of Trustees on the 17th of September 2018 at 7 p.m. to determine whether the violations have been properly remedied and whether to order that corrective action be undertaken by the village to correct said violations at the property owner's cost and expense to bill said cost and expense to the property owner and to levy same against the property. And whereas the public hearing was duly held by the Board of Trustees on the 17th of September 2018, and whereas the owner or owners did not appear, and whereas the owner or owners have not taken steps to correct the violations, and the violations still exist. And whereas the Board of Trustees is authorized pursuant to Section 170-2 of the Property Maintenance Law to authorize that the village undertake to remedy such violations at the property owner's cost and expense. Now therefore be it resolved that the village, its contractors or agents shall enter upon the property to correct the violations and that all costs incurred by the village, including administrative, legal, corrective costs, be charged to the property owner and such charge shall be added to the tax bill of the property owner if not paid within 30 days of notification to the last known address of the property owner as shown on the village tax records. May I have a motion? So motion by Trustee Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. May I have roll call? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next I have bills and claims for fiscal year 2018-19, $97,372.87. The bills were reviewed downstairs before the meeting, and your wishes to pay? Motion to pay the bills. Motion by Trustee Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> yes. The TV's out. Okay. Any luck with Time Warner? It's on. Okay. Is it on? All right, so we apologize to the public watching this at home. We're still waiting, believe it or not. We have the same issues with Time Warner Spectrum that you have at your house. Uh, I don't think I have to describe those issues. <laughs> uh, so I hope it's on now. And I apologize for that brief interruption. 
sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, it's a couple of quick things. So I have a resolution here, which will be handed out, read and handed out again this Sunday at Sacred Heart, honoring Madeline Jones Savaney. Whereas the quality and richness of life in the community of Highland Falls is enriched and sustained through the contributions of those individuals whose long and pers personable life personify the values of family, faith, and citizenship. And whereas a citizen of such worthy purpose is Madeline Joan Silvani, an exceptional person whose zest for life and concern for others has enriched and inspired the lives of her family and friends. And whereas the family and friends of Maddie Silvani will gather at Sacred Heart School Gym on September the 23rd, 2018 to extend their praise and appreciation honoring this distinguished lady who graduated from Holland Falls High School and has enriched the lives of her family and friends through her contributions to the youth of our community through her work with Sacred Heart School CYO. And whereas through her 50 years service to West Point Military Academy involving women's sports. She was inducted into the Army Sports Hall of Fame on the 14th of September 2018, and therefore be it resolved that a copy of this proclamation be transmitted to Maddie Savani of Holland Falls, New York, and be a witness to all with a mayor's signature. So uh, this will be presented to her this Sunday. Brian, you want to make a comment on that? In the uh, cafeteria, Sacred Heart. Correct. Thank you. Uh, the north end sidewalks, Thergate South, uh, will s be advertised this Friday. Bids received on the 5th of October at 2 p.m. So we'll see what kind of bids come in for replacing the sidewalks on Main Street at the north end. That's through a grant from Senator Larkin of $200,000. This morning I had a meeting uh, and a conference call with four West Point grads, one from the class of 81, one from the class of 86, and two other young men. Uh, and this was um, about some of the old grads starting up a company here, uh, coming back and helping us to make the community what we all want it to be. Uh, there were a lot of nice, a lot of uh, Good things said, help that's needed, help that I haven't been able to garner to make things happen with West Point through the Department of Army and the AOG. So uh, this, uh, uh, 100, in this particular case, 100 employees, and they happen to be uh, good paying jobs. So we'll see where this goes, but uh, no matter where this goes for this particular uh, grad, uh, he and others are willing now to help uh, to make this community again what it should be. Um, and that help is needed. I will tell you that. This, uh, that help is needed. Um, Brian. Yeah, um, I just wanted to make a couple of remarks about Eric Smith's uh, speech for 9-11. I thought it was excellent. I thought it uh, got us all convinced that we really need to keep 9-11 in our hearts. I also like the way he formulated the idea that we all came together as Americans and that we can still do that in 2018. I just think uh, he did a fantastic job. On the 22nd, uh, the center is going to be have their fourth anniversary. Please join us from 11 to 1, 11 to 2. Standardized time confuses me. It's 11 to 2. Please come down for some... This Saturday, correct? Yep. yep. This Saturday. Yep. That's it. Thank you. And congratulations to the center. Four years. I would have said maybe a couple. But it's four years, so that's great. It's four. Uh, Mark? The only thing I got is I actually spoke to somebody to the state about our main road coming into here to Howland Falls because it's not going to survive two plow jobs coming in here. It's just not. It's, it's, it's ripped up now. People are already avoiding the road, so hopefully I gave him John's n number down there and everything else. So they'll contact him because down on Dutterbird Mountain going towards Bear Mountain, they actually have contractors out now. You've seen them down there? Right, so they're, they're around. So maybe a little help from West Point too, because like I say, that road's bad already going out there.
and I did approach West Point, the garrison commander, to uh, put whatever pressure they could, mm -hmm. because it does lead into their uh, to the academy. Right. So, great, thanks, Jimmy. Oh, Charlie mm -hmm. first. Um, well, it's funny you mentioned Dunderberg Mountain. I think the last time that road was worked on was exactly 25 years ago, and as a result of hy hydraulic fluid spread on the road, we were airborne, and uh, I was in a body cast for three months after that road work was done. So I hope they're more careful with um, spilling things on the roadway. Um, However, some good news. Um, we are members of the American Defense Communities, um, and they publish information of interest to communities outside of military bases. Um, an authority was granted to the DOD just recently that now allows the Department of Defense to help state and local governments fund infrastructure projects outside of the gates. Now, that's the good news. That's step one. They have to provide some funding for that, and they don't think the funding will be in place until 2020. But at least things are moving in the right direction. Um, the only other things I've got, um, I was on the river recently and noticed that there were 10 RVs parked down in the uh, marina parking lot. Um, I believe that these are in violation. Um, so I have asked the building department to look into it. I know he's meeting with uh, Justin to find out, I guess, if a variance was granted that we aren't aware of. Okay. Uh, he, th they were the owner. I guess it would have to go to the owner of the property, which is different than the owner of the RV. Uh, no, the owner of the property uh, has gotten a notice from the town. Um, they were given permission, I'm told, to put in the, the the electric hookups. Now, if that's true, I don't know what the building department thought they were going to do with these. 10 or 12 electric hookups. And that was done. So I don't know why they were granted that, but they were. John Haber did. Yeah, that. yeah. A so, mistake or an error? Because they came before the ZBA. They were too yeah. late, actually, but that's another issue. Um, but I instructed their attorney at the time that a mistake by a building inspector does not. Um, uh, you know, does not change the zoning law. You're still in violation. Right. And there's a lot of case law on that. So then they disappeared, and I don't think they paid paid their escrow amount. So there, yeah, there, it, it's a. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know that I can say they're back. They didn't go anywhere, but um, I know that they've been contacted either verbally or. Uh, in writing from the building department. That I know. And also there is an RV parking sign that's attached to a utility pole right at where you turn yeah. down um, by McDonald's and that's a violation too. Uh, although I think we have to contact the owner of the pole to, to yes. get it taken down. Yes. Um, the only other thing on, well, uh, I did want to go back to Trunk or Treat. Uh, it is later this year, um, so it'll be dark. Um, we might want to look into providing some extra lighting on the parking lot, either well, through the fire department or... Yeah, I spoke to some of the folks putting this on, and I mentioned, I said, the fire department's gonna be there anyway, so they have this, the, the light stanchions to make that happen. Um, we definitely yeah. should do that. Uh, last thing on my agenda is, um, for future discussion, Airbnbs um, occasionally produce problems because of additional cars parking in different neighborhoods. I've only had one complaint so far, so I don't think we've reached 
critical mass, but um, I am aware of Warwick and a couple other communities passing some regulations that grant access to um, certify these temporary hotels. <laughs> Um, it, it may be something with, that we need to look at. That's it. Uh, Charlie, will you uh, communicate to the fire department? And, uh, sure. I don't want to say make sure they're there, but yeah. that they're going to their lights are going to be needed. Okay. Thanks. Where, where do we stand now with the RV part? Well, I, I'm not aware of any application before the zoning board, so I don't know where. So we have to wait for the building department to. Um, well, the building department is meeting with the town's attorney on Thursday okay. on this subject. Okay. okay. It's, okay. it's in their court. Okay. No? Good. Well, it's village property, isn't it? Yes. Well, yep. It's in the village. It, Correct. It's not, we don't own the property. But. No, but I'm saying that the, the village is, the, the violation is in, is on, property that's located in the village, therefore your zoning law applies, not the town's. Um, therefore, if there's a violation, the building inspector would issue it on behalf of the village, not the town. So I'm not sure, honestly, exactly why they're meeting with Justin. We should talk Okay, off. so here's, okay. here's how, what's that? We I should mean, talk off. Okay, fine. so here's. They can do that. Yeah. But but no, but but I'm, okay. I'm not aware of that. Here's here's what I would ask you to do. Okay. Since you're calling Justin Ryder anyway on the on the uh, on the escrow, mm -hmm. uh, would you bring that up? I will. Because maybe you should be there, I'll ask or you someone you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you, Jim. All right. Uh, so for the wastewater treatment facility in August, uh, their average volume of wastewater treated for the month was little over 900,000 gallons a day. Uh, we did have a lot of rain last month, uh, 8.7 inches. Um, the, belt press, the belt press continues to be a problem down there. It's only operating four days, um, and it's only compounding uh, some of the other things that are transpiring with other parts of the facility. Um, so I'm just patiently awaiting to see where we are with uh, our engineer on that application. The uh, other things that were being done down there was their daily scraping, cleaning, and painting. Uh, they did 13 days of that. Uh, general uh, maintenance and lubrication of some pumps, motors, and machinery as required. Uh, Tam was also down there and removed uh, some of the grit. Uh, this is what comes out of the belt press. Uh, and they did uh, 40.5 cubic feet. Um, that's that's what I have for that. Uh, I've been uh, sending some information up to Dr. Shaboy, um, and he thanked me for it. There's a couple of things out there. There's some education plans um, that he was going to pass on to the other teachers, and it talks about uh, environmental education lesson, lesson plans. Um, has a lot to do with, uh, and there's three different sets of lesson plans. It goes from pre-K to uh, three, from three to six, and from six to 12. The lessons vary from uh, insects, mammals, reptiles, wildlife, and water, to uh, recycling, conservation, and uh, other different uh, water topics. So he was happy that I sent that to him. Um, couple of other things that uh, I also sent up to him were going green going back to school so going green back to school uh, he thought was another great idea uh, and he was going to also send that home with the kids some of the things that they can should consider at home would be uh, the paper bag lunch that we're all used to uh, getting the little lunch boxes um, and any other type of reusable bags for their lunches itself. Uh, getting rid of the sandwich bags and using uh, reusable containers. Uh, those are just a couple at, the, at home things. At the school, there's some uh, other information out there uh, and they talk about starter programs and setting up a green team uh, at the school itself uh, for a recycling program. <clears throat> 
a uh, few other things, especially with the sports seasons that are out there. Uh, they're looking, uh, everybody can't play uh, physical sports, but uh, maybe if you wanted a new sport, Keep America Beautiful Recycling Bowl. And that could be done from K through 12. And it's a recycling competition that uh, is nationwide. And especially when you are participating in sports to use reusable water bottles. Uh, there was some also information I sent to him about some grants that are available for some of these programs and implementing them. So he was pretty happy about that, and I think the kids are going to be happy too. Another thing that I sent up there, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important things, is today is Constitution Day. Today was the day that the Constitution was signed. Uh, I asked him to please pass that on to the uh, future generations uh, and let them know that this was the foundation which our forefathers sought to seek independence from uh, England. So with that being said, I sent him a copy of the Constitution. I asked him to also possibly talk about the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, and he thought that was a great idea also. <clears throat> and it's a good time to do it, especially on Constitution Day, because we know the kids aren't in school on the 4th of July. Uh, the EPA uh, has uh, some great information out there right now. September is National Preparedness Month. They are doing uh, a campaign to inform uh, the citizens how to prepare for disasters. Uh, we all know that Florence is a big issue down in the Carolinas. Uh, we've had our uh, fair share in the past. So if anybody would like uh, more information, you can go to the EPA's website. It talks about uh, if you do get flooded out, moldy homes, power outages, and the things uh, that you can do um, to prevent from being injured, uh, especially with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, also, you know, everybody uses generators, how to uh, proper distance to keep them away from your house. So. Uh, that information is at the EPA's website, <clears throat> or if you wanted to contact me, I would be more than happy to guide you through that website. That's what I got for tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, public comment? What are the locations now being considered for the location of the South Tower? I don't, I, I don't have any. No one in the village is uh, meeting with Homeland Towers uh, the, or, the board, pardon me? The board has not met with Homeland Towers. Or, They're going to have to Or any, any other? No. Cell tower? No. Applicants? No. I mean, I. the board has not, has the board, have any of you met? No. Has any individual members, including yourself? Uh, I had a uh, conversation with someone from Homeland Towers that they're showing interest in coming here. Uh, but I don't know any locations yet. They said they had a location on private property. He wouldn't tell me where. And I asked him to research public property, village property. That's the extent. Is Row Park or the um, the former Rodway parcel on the uh, south end of Row Park yeah, I under consideration? Yeah, uh, uh, they looked at it. Uh, they. If I, I wish I had it with me. They, I, I, I don't know what word to use. It, it, it's feasible, uh, but I will tell you the location uh, on an aerial map was way too close to Saddley Grove. So that won't, they don't know this. It wouldn't even be entertained. It would not be entertained. Has the village received from uh, any interested party or the village on its own conducted any studies showing the so-called dead zone or no cell phone or inadequate cell phone service in the village? 
Uh, no, and that I have to keep with the policy of the board in that you can make public comment. But for, to, for there to be questions like these and answered is not public comment. This is your time to make public comment. But I will answer that last question. If you're asking, has the village done any research on their own or hired a company to do research? I guess that's what you're asking. The answer yeah. is no. Have you received any from... Annette, I just, you can make public comment. Well, public, I'm sorry. public comment has to be informative so that the citizen uh, I know that you battle with this on, I know that you uh, I don't battle uh, entertain this at the school board meetings also so um, I'm, I'm not going to you know get into anything I'm, I'm telling you what the policy is now you know I, and it's hard for me for me it's hard for the board it's hard um, but you have the guidelines for public comment I think they're on the back of the agenda. I'm aware of that. Yeah. But uh, go ahead. Ke ke I've answered your questions, so. Last time uh, I was here, uh, you had indicated a plan to move the green sheds that uh, either four or five of them located in uh, Row Park. Has there been any yeah. movement on that? No pun intended, right? Movement on it. Uh, I want those sheds moved. Uh, the town recreation director does not, but that's okay. We can disagree. They're on village property. They're an eyesore opinion. Um, and so the highway department went over and looked at moving them. Um, they have to all be empty to be moved, and then a couple of them might maybe probably fall apart when they're lifted. And then, then when they go down that, I don't know if it's blacktop. Geez, I was over there so many times this summer. But if you go down on the uh, east side of the pool towards the bathhouse, that's atrocious also. Uh, the, there were wires or something in the way. So now that is an, uh, that's an issue that we'll overcome. And the highway department is trying to figure it out, and they will. And they will be moved back there but we won't be able to see them. I suspect that some of them some of the roofs might be seen but not to the extent that they are now. I just want to uh, call to your attention. I think you have a public health issue now also. Uh, when I was walking around there the other evening um, there were both uh, multiple skunks uh, by, the, by the sheds? Yeah, coming yeah, out of that good. area, and uh, several large rats. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on it. It's not as easy as I thought it was. I thought it would be as, imagine me at this age doing this. I thought it would be as easy as saying, John, I want those sheds moved back there. It's not that easy. But we're working on it. Thank but you. But we work definitely, they're definitely going to get moved. Thanks. I hope to the location that I'm recommending. If not, I gotta go to Plan B, which I don't have yet. Thank you. Yes. I I, I gotta get on that, and we are at the shed. So yeah, I don't know how that happened. Cat the guy of Highland Falls, uh, Mr. Ramis. Thank you. I'm going to steal a little something. Government for the people, by the people. Well, for the people, it's time to change the policy. We have a right to have our questions answered. It was not sufficient to just vote on moving forward con with consolidation. You actually have to move forward with consolidation. And I personally want to see sometime in the very near future that that start. Is there anything else? If not, all yes. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Jim Modlin, uh, Village of Highland Falls. Um, I've had an opportunity to uh, view the proceedings of two boards, uh, the current board and then the one prior to it. One of the things that uh, I was always impressed with was the discipline that the board seemed to have in terms of how they sign contracts, expend taxpayer dollars. 
uh, just tonight authorizing the mayor to sign a contract for Edmonds and Associates that you talked about, uh, having a motion to do that, having a motion to sign uh, or to pay the bills and claims. They've been reviewed. Uh, it's my understanding that the board members are aware of all that. Um, it's also my understanding, though, getting back to conversations that have been in the paper. I think there was a conversation last week, uh, maybe, or not last week, last board meeting, uh, and maybe a prior board meeting about the uh, recent fire down at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and uh, I, am un I have been told that there are three, at least three trustees that were not aware of any kind of work or any kind of authorization for work to happen. And I find that sort of hard to believe given the rigor of what I have observed in the public meetings. So I'm just making, I'm not asking a question, I'm just making a comment uh, that there seems to be a disconnect someplace. And uh, I know the board's probably looking into this uh, and uh, eagerly await your outcome associated if there was a process breakdown and then what is going to be done to correct that because that seems to be counter to what the board has done in the past regarding consolidation um, I had an opportunity to view the last meeting uh, Olga Anderson made some very good comments about consolidation others have presented to the board uh, I'd like to echo what both Olga and Jim DeSalvo indicated last time in terms of looking at a balanced approach to this. Uh, Jim, I thought, made a very good comment about watching carefully what other communities may be up against. So again, uh, I've said this before, I think uh, the topic needs to be discussed. It needs to be discussed factually. There need to be people without a stake in the game necessarily that are looking at all the facts and presenting some recommendations. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your uh, word facts have to be uh, presented and nothing but facts from when you sit up here and you did present some things that aren't fact but we'll get into them another time if there's nothing else yes Patrick Flynn Muller Avenue uh, my only comment is uh, there were some great points brought up today unfortunately we can't get answers to any questions so I would ask that cell towers consolidation and the sewer plant be put on the next agenda so that when we have comments on agenda items people in the public can actually ask questions and possibly get answers because it is a good thing to have public comment and to voice our opinion but if there's no follow-up and there's no answers to the public I know that you want to give but we're not being given the right forum because it may happen two three weeks later then something else comes up and something else comes up and I personally think these are three great topics and would love to see them on the next agenda if possible so that there could be answers to the again you don't get many people at the meetings it's just a fact people have a lot of things going on people are sometimes reluctant to come but those that do come that have serious issues are not here in my opinion to go against the board but to work with the board and get the answers and possibly give you information to help solve a problem. So that's my comment is I would love to see that happen at the next agenda. Thank you. We okay with the TV? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll take a motion. We have to go into executive session on pending litigation with our attorney. I have a motion. So May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much.